Welcome back. Super excited moving forward. In this important lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to connect your physical Android phone, mobile phone or device with the Android Studio desktop. So in the previous lessons, we kind of took a look at how to connect the phone, how to configure the AVD, for instance. Then, of course, we have our XML viewer here so we can see what changes are being made as we go along within the XML file. But what we want to do here is actually connect our own physical mobile phone. So once we start developing an app, it's actually going to show up live on our own phone instead of using the emulator. So for right now, we're using the Android Pi, which is the API 28. If your mobile phone or device has an Android operating system, let's say, API 27 or Oreo or Marshmallow or even lower, then you obviously would need to configure settings first before you can configure your physical mobile device and connect to the Android Studio. Let me in fact demonstrate. So let's jump right in. And I'm going to first show you how it is and what kind of message we get, and then I'll, I'll demonstrate how to configure it. Perfect. So here's our simple app, Hello World app, that we've been working on so far. So I'm going to go up to run and then try to run this app. So notice once it initializes the ADB, it'll list up all the available virtual devices. Now at this point in time, I do not have my physical mobile phone connected, so it's not going to show up here. Let's go ahead and connect our mobile device. So I'm going to take my USB and simply to my computer. And as soon as I do it, Notice it shows up as the Samsung running Android 8 API 26. And it kind of tells me also in brackets, parentheses, right, that the minimum SDK API is 28, which is greater than the device API 26. That implies that I will not be able to use my phone at this point in time since I'm using the Android 8, yet my SDK says I'm using Android Pi. So I'm going to cancel out of here first and then go to our project settings or project structure so that we can configure our app for SDK to accept API 26, which is comparable to our device so that we can use the device as our physical device as the emulator for our app. Perfect. So let's cancel for now. Let's go up to File on the menu, and then there's an option called Project Structure. Of course, if you know shortcuts, Control, Alt, Shift, and the S key on the keyboard will take you directly to the Project Structure. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. This opens up the dialog box. The first option is the SDK location. The second is the Project. So it shows me the Gradle version, the Android plugin version, and so forth. And then of course, there are others like ads, authentication, notifications. And again, we'll be working on this as we go along. And if I click on app, which is the app that we're actually using right here, right, within the Android Studio, the compile SDK version says API 28. Ah, there you go. So we're using Android 9 Pi. And if I scroll down, I have a couple of other options. So I'm going to select the Android 8 Oreo. Once I select this, let's go to the different tab. So let's go to the tab where it says signing and explore that. This is for your name, key, alias, password, store file. Flavors is what I'm interested in, which is the next tab. And again, the minimum SDK version. Okay, so note it's the minimum, not the maximum, right? So since we started off with Android 9 Pi, that kind of set our minimum SDK version, which is the latest version at this point in time. So I'm going to click on the drop down arrow and select again the Android 8, which now becomes the minimum SDK version, Android 8, which is the Oreo. And same application ID, the target SDK version. I'm going to change that to 8 as well, and so on. I can always check the build types and dependencies as well. Perfect. So we have configured our properties and set the compile SDK version to 
match our devices API. So click OK once you're done. And as soon as you click OK, this is now going to configure the SDK to match your mobile device. And once again, the Gradle, the build automation tool, right? Remember Gradle script, it's gonna run, it's gonna sync and make sure everything is at par with your new settings. In this case, once the build is finished, it says that it's failed, right? So let's take a look at what really is happening here. So we have the Java compiler, which is primarily telling us that there's a, a linking reference that is being failed. So what comes to mind when you think of linking references? So which means that this build, Gradle, right, it's building the app and for some reason it's failing. And the reason here is, of course, resource linking failed, which kind of tells us that something is missing or something is not right. Even though we switched our APIs from 28 to 26, but there's something else going on. What do we do in this case? So the first thing that you need to check is, of course, your build Gradle, okay? Because this is your app that is giving you the message as you're building it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. So click twice, and this brings up the build Gradle, okay, for your app. So it tells you that you're running Android version, which is the SDK is 26, because we successfully changed this in project settings. And then here's our package name. The minimum version is 26. Target version is also 26 because that's what we changed. And the settings that you see here, of course, can be always brought back up by going on file and project structure. Okay, just wanna quickly show you this, by the way. So here's your app. Here are the properties that we changed. Here are the flavors, right? This is the minimum SDK version and then the target version and then your application ID. So I just quickly wanted to show you this, okay? So what you see here in the project structure, let me cancel, is actually is in this file. And that's what the Gradle is doing. It's actually building this, okay? So now the concepts are fairly clear, right? The build automation tool is simply taking your settings and it's building it again. You change something, it's gonna build it again and it continues on. Perfect, wonderful. So moving forward, let's scroll down and see if there are any anomalies, right? Right off the bat that you get to see. And the nice thing is that it kind of gives you the line, the red squiggly lines that you see under this implementation dependencies. So the very first thing pops up and it kind of shows you, it's very smart that this support library should not use a different version, which is 28, than the compiled SDK version of 26. Well, that makes sense because we really wanted to use 26. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 26 directly within the file and then try to sync again, right? And try to build again. So let's try it. But before I actually click on sync now, even though I've changed it to version one, notice it's even smarter. Now it tells me a newer version of com.android.support.apache.tomcat version seven, then 26.0.0 is available. And the latest version is 26.1.0. So why don't I use that? So I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to one. So now my dependencies, right, which is the server, the Apache, or the app compact, by the way, not Apache, why do I keep saying Apache, is 26.1. So let's try it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and sync now. And this should again do the building of the app again, right, based on my changes that I've made. And then if this is successful, of course, it's gonna say build successful. And then we're gonna try again to connect to our phone, which is our physical mobile device. And that's what we're in fact doing after we're done with this. And as you go through these files, right? Notice it kind of gives you a nice light bulb, so to speak, 
which is just kind of giving you an idea or it's intelligent, right? It's using intelligence that you can convert or you can change values. But I'm going to get to this later once we actually start into our programming end of things, okay? But for right now, we're just trying to make sure and learn any which way we can to configure our environment successfully and really pin down the concepts as well as the applications hands-on. Perfect, so it looks like our build is completed successfully. So let's close this app, tab now, and let's try it again. So let's go ahead and right now make sure my phone is connected. So this is my live mobile device, Android running API 26, right? The Android Oreo. And what happens when I run this app called Hello World? Play desk, right? That's what it says right now. And let's click on Run. It brings up the devices. And of course, the connected devices is the Samsung Android 8 running API 26. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And as soon as I do this, on the background, right, the build is going to run again. And perfect. Voila. So you have your Hello World Claydesk app right on your phone. Congratulations. You've successfully configured. Cancel out of here. We don't need that. There we go. There we go. Let's try it again. Choose a device. It's going to connect. Perfect. So let me minimize this. All right. So here's the desktop again. And then, of course, my app should be here, right? Because I did configure it and it's now connected to my live mobile device. So I'm going to click on apps. I can do it from here or from my mobile device, either way. And then there you go. So we have a new icon. Congratulations. This is your first app on your real Android mobile device running Android Oreo, Android 8, API 26. So if I were to click on this, perfect. You will see Hello World. There we go. And move this aside. Now, what happens if I were to change the text? Okay. Will this reflect? on my live mobile device let's try it out so i'm going to say hello world android studio is great and as soon as i do this notice in my xml viewer of course it changes right what happens to my app let's bring it up okay now at this point so i'm going to go ahead and close this and once i save this it builds successfully shows up on my xml Let's try to run it again. I'm just going to look for the virtual device. It brings up the dialog box. Simply select your physical mobile device running Android. Click OK. And let's see what comes up. So it's connecting again. And this time it should give you. Let's close this. Let's click again on view. So it's connecting. Perfect. Wonderful. So you're able to now successfully make some changes minimize this within your XML file, right? And you're able to successfully show it on your mobile device. It's super exciting. Excellent. So go ahead, practice with this. Very important. Before we actually move forward towards the design, towards the other areas of programming, getting into more Java, and so on, just practice with what we've done so far in the previous several lessons. Because remember, step-by-step step is always nice. I know it's very tempting to jump the gun and say, hey, I want a program, let's go do it. But then you really don't understand what's going on. So it's always important to not only understand, but now you're actually more proficient at what is going on and why things are happening. So hope this helps. Any questions, feel free to post them in the discussion area. I'll be glad to help with this. Let's move to our next lesson.